In this video, I'll be demonstrating the flow of the core pulmonary exam featuring proper communication with the patient, draping and positioning, visual assessment of breathing, assessment for clubbing, and pulmonary auscultation. For a detailed discussion of these techniques and the possible pathologic findings one might encounter, as well as discussion and demonstration of specialized pulmonary maneuvers that are only indicated in certain situations, please see other videos in this series, the links to which are in this video's description. Today's video will begin with a very brief history focusing on some examples of questions that would most directly influence the choice of maneuvers one might include in a patient's pulmonary exam. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing? I'm well. Uh, my name is Eric Strong. I'm one of the internal medicine doctors here at Stanford. And how would you like to be addressed today? Oh, please call me Jim. Jim, well, it's nice to meet you. I understand you're here for the pulmonary exam. That's right. They sent me right here. Okay. Well, do you have any questions before we start? Uh, no, not really. All right. Well, I, I'm actually going to ask you a few questions um, to help to gauge uh, what form of the exam we do, what specific maneuvers we include. Do you have a history of any lung diseases that you know about? No. For, for example, asthma or COPD or emphysema? No, I, I don't have any of those. Okay. And have you ever been hospitalized due to a respiratory infection, such as pneumonia or COVID? Oh, no. Okay. And do you smoke, Jim? Nope. Have you ever smoked in the past? No, never. Do you use any recreational drugs, including marijuana? No. Okay. And are you currently working? Yes, I am. I'm an accountant. Accountant. Okay, wonderful. And do you have any hobbies that would involve uh, inhalation of dust or fumes, things like woodworking or working with spray paints? No, nothing that I do involves uh, any uh, dangerous substance, substances like that. Okay. And do you have any pets at home? No, I don't. Uh, do you have any ex uh, routine exposures to exotic animals or birds? No. Okay. And can you give me some sense about what the most physically strenuous thing is that you do in a typical week? Uh, my uh, wife and I like to take walks on the weekends, about two miles or so. And I also try and take time to jog uh, like two or three times during the weekdays, like for about 20 minutes. Okay. Well, that sounds like you're, you're pretty active. Yeah, I try to be. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, do you ever, ever have any problems with those kinds of activities where you feel like you're getting more winded than you feel like you should be? No, not yet anyway. Okay. And I'm going to ask you just a couple more questions about recent symptoms, um, about whether or not you've experienced any of the following in about the last month or so. Um, any shortness of breath? No. Any coughing? No. Any chest pain? Oh, no. Um, and when you sleep at night, do you sleep with one pillow or more than one pillow? Just one pillow. Okay. All right. Well, all that sounds wonderful. Um, I'm going to move on to the exam now. Do you have any questions before we make that transition? No, I don't have any. Okay. Well, great. Well, as we've been talking, I have been observing your respiratory pattern, and it seems like your breathing is nice and regular with a regular rate, regular depth, um, which is obviously normal. Next, I'm going to take a look at your fingers, actually. We can tell a little bit about the lungs sometimes by looking at the fingers. And to do this, I'm going to ask you to hold up your fingers, like take your two index fingers, and hold them like this. And what we're looking for is to see if there's a little diamond-shaped opening between the two nails there. And I see that in your case, which is normal. So that's good to see. Okay. At this point, I'm going to listen to your breathing with my stethoscope. For this, I'm going to have you actually swing your whole body to face this direction. And I'm going to come around behind you. Okay. Is it okay if I untie your gown? Uh, please help yourself. And as I do that, you can place your um, hands on your opposite shoulders. Right. And this helps to keep the gown in place. And I'm going to listen to your breathing. Each time you see my stethoscope, or sorry, each time you feel my stethoscope uh, on your back, take a nice deep breath in with your mouth. I will. Jim, now I'd like you to place your hands on your hips, and I will be listening to the breathing underneath your arms. Okay. Okay. 
Um, at this point, I mean, you can you put your hands back down again, and I'm going to listen to three spots on your uh, front of your chest. Uh, do you mind lowering the gown to your waist? No, I don't mind. And just take some nice deep breaths in again when my stethoscope's um, on your skin. Okay. Thank you very much. You can raise your gown back up again. Would you like me to help you retie it in the back? Yes, please. And Jim, you can swing your legs back in this direction again. Okay. And I'm happy to report that your pulmonary exam was completely normal. Oh, that's good to hear. Do you have any questions for me? I'm sure I will after you leave, but no, for now I don't. All right, well, thank you very much for coming in. Well, thank you for taking care of me. If I was describing Jim's pulmonary exam during an oral presentation, I would summarize it as follows. Jim has a regular breathing pattern with normal rate and depth and no use of accessory muscles. He has no clubbing of his fingers. His lungs are cleared to auscultation bilaterally.